In Acts chapter 4, Peter and John were arrested and imprisoned for healing a crippled man and preaching in Jesus' name. The next day, Peter and John were called before the Sanhedrin to be questioned. Peter boldly preached the gospel of Jesus Christ to these leaders. He explained that it was through faith in the name of Jesus that this crippled man had been healed. When the council members saw the boldness of Peter and John, they were amazed. They realized that Peter and John were uneducated and untrained. How then was Peter able to address them so boldly and articulately? They then realized that Peter and John had been with Jesus. We see a connection here. When we have been with Jesus, there is a difference. Our difference as believers is not based in our human talent or wisdom. Rather, it is the result of having been with Jesus. As you and I spend our life with Jesus, walking by faith in an intimate relationship of submitted trust, as believers in Christ, we can and should expect that His power and influence will make a difference. God's strength is perfected in our human weakness. When we know our own inability, then this makes room for the power of Christ to work in and through us so that God alone receives the glory and the praise. This is how our lives are to become a continual offering to Him. The council realized that they could not intimidate these disciples into being quiet about Jesus. They also realized that they had no legal or moral grounds to discipline or punish Peter or John. The council discussed this among themselves and said, It's evident to everyone in Jerusalem that a notable miracle has been done through them, so we really can't deny it. This means that if they could have denied it, they would have. We see the extent of their prejudice against Jesus. These were, after all, the same leaders who only a few months earlier had conspired against and crucified Jesus. But now they couldn't find any way of punishing Peter and John because everybody in Jerusalem was talking about this miracle and glorifying God for what had happened. So the council severely threatened Peter and John, commanding them never again to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. But we read that Peter and John boldly answered, you decide whether you think it's right for us to obey you instead of God. But as for us, we can't help but talk about what we've seen and heard. This, of course, infuriated the council, and so they further threatened them. But they realized that they couldn't do more than that because it would clearly show their hypocrisy if they punished Peter and John for such a good and awesome deed. We need to realize that, just like then, there is an antichrist spirit in the world today that hates Jesus and opposes him. Remember that Jesus told his own disciples in John chapter 15, If the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. Jesus said to his disciples in Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Just like then, there are people and groups today who seek to pressure or even outright forbid Christians from evangelizing in the name of Jesus. But just like Peter and John, our proper response should be, decide for yourselves whether you think it's right for us to obey man instead of God. But as for us, we can't help but talk about what we know to be true about Jesus. Persecution of Christians is nothing new. Jesus told his disciples, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Mm -hmm.